Hi everyone and welcome to Nicole Studios. Today's video is on how to create a professional YouTube intro in Final Cut Pro. This one is based on the one that YouTuber Annie Dubay uses in her videos. So let's get started. With the project name, I just used professional YouTube intro and you can see all of the specifications I used on it, but it really doesn't matter as long as you have a project. First go to Generates and get a custom solid. Then go one frame forward and add another custom solid. With this custom solid, go to the parameters and change it to red or whatever color, but I used red. So now that we have our custom solid with the color red, we're gonna go to 18 frames and go to the position tab and add a keyframe. Then go to back to the beginning at your one frame and turn on transform and then go and pull that solid down. That will create an animation that is the first step of all of this. So next we're gonna go to four frames and add in one more custom solid. Then change the color to white this time and then we are going to add some more animation. So with this animation, we're gonna wanna go to about 22 frames and go and add a position keyframe. So then go back to the beginning of that white solid at four frames and pull it down all the way out of the frame. So then this is the animation that we'll get. And it's looking pretty good so far. So now let's add in a picture. This picture can be anything, but for me, it was my YouTube channel picture, but it can be anything, so I chose this one. So then add a shape mask onto it in the effects tab, and we're gonna make it a circle. So just play with the specifications and get the best shape that fits yours. So for mine, it was a circle. So once you've gotten that to your liking, we're going to kind of fix the feather because I don't like that feathered off effect. I kind of wanted it a hard circle, so we're just going to take some of that feather off. So once you've added that in, go to one second and two frames and then click on the transform tab. So then we're gonna change the scale a little bit because I didn't like how big it was, but you can keep it big if you want to. So then add keyframes at position and scale, and then go back to the beginning at 12 frames and just pull it down kind of to the bottom and make it to scale zero. And then you'll see that's the animation that will happen, but I thought that it was coming up a little bit too quickly. So at 18 frames, I turn the scale down a little bit more. And then as you'll see, it kind of gets bigger faster, but beginning stays tiny. So now I'm going to add in the vertigo effect. This kind of gives it a cool effect as it gets bigger and I'll delete the one at the end, but we'll keep the one at the beginning and you'll see that it kind of gives it cool effect as it gets bigger. So because I didn't like the edges on it, I added the round curve at the end. So now we're gonna add in a background image. This image for me is stripes, but it can be anything that you want it to be. But I thought it would give it some more dynamics. So then we're gonna scale down that stripe image and play with the rotation a little bit. And then now we're gonna go to masks and add another shape mask on top of that to make it a circle once again. So then I'm just gonna play with the parameters of the shape mask to get a circle or whatever shape you want. It doesn't have to be a circle, but I thought a circle would work best. So then feather off those edges and play with the rotation a little bit more until you get your perfect rotation on it. And now you can see that the lines are actually on top of the picture and we don't want that. So we're going to click on that layer and drag it underneath the image layer. So once it's underneath, then we're gonna reposition it to be the size and the location that we want it to be. And as you can see in the first part, we had two circles. So you're gonna copy and paste that one and drag it underneath once again and then just pull one from on top of the other one and then we'll have two circles. 
and I'm just going to position kind of it diagonally across from each other. And now it's time to add animation. So we're going to add keyframes at scale and position, and then at the beginning, we're just going to scale it down to zero. And we're going to do the same thing with that one. So then we have that animation effect, and because I didn't like the way it was coming up, I pulled it to where the image was coming from, and I increased the scale so I could see what I was doing, but just pull it kind of to the center where the image is coming from, and then scale it down once again. And now you're gonna get the animation where they all come up together, which I really like, and I thought they were getting too big too quickly. I decreased the scale a little bit at the one second mark on both of them, and I think that that made the animation even better. So now that's what we have so far. And at this point, we're gonna add in the pictures that come in and kind of fly out from the center. So choose ones that best represent your channel or whatever you're trying to use this intro for. So I chose a clapboard, a Apple logo, a computer, and a camera because my channel is on VFX, editing, filmmaking, and those things represent what I am trying to help you learn. So now we're gonna drag those into the composition. Because I thought that there were too many things going on in the composition, I selected the three custom solids and created a new compound clip with those. And I did this by clicking Option G. I'm also gonna do the same thing with the line layer because there's a lot going on in this timeline at this point. So now once we have those all done, we're going to scale down the size of the camera. And you can also play with rotation, but it's all up to you. So at about one second and nine frames, this is where the pictures are going to be at their biggest stage. So just scale it up to the largest size and put keyframes at the position and scale. Then go to the beginning of where it comes in at 14 frames. First, change the position to come out from where the image is coming from and play with the rotation as well because this is what's going to give it that kind of flying out effect and then make the scale go to zero. And then we have the first part of the animation. And also with this animation, I went kind of in the middle of when it pops out and changed the scale again to zero because I thought it was coming out too quickly. Now at two seconds and five frames, this is where the camera animation stops. So I pulled out the camera from its location at that point and added some rotation which will also help the animation and then put the scale to zero. So that's how you get that effect of it popping out. Now we're gonna do one more just to clarify what just happened. So starting at 14 frames, we have our Apple logo. And at one second and nine frames, this is where they are the biggest. So then put, take your Apple logo and also trim the clip to the right size and scale it to whatever size you want it to be. And then play around with the position you want it to be in. I wasn't exactly sure what size or what place I wanted it to go, but I ended up kind of deciding on the left-hand corner of the animation. So at this point, add keyframes at position and scale, and then go back to the beginning of the animation. So then pull your image back to the center where they all came from and then play with the rotation to give it that rotating effect. And then I went to two seconds and six frames and then changed the position so I kind of got an idea of where the path would be and then just play that back to see if I liked it. Now I'm gonna add some rotation to it to add that animation that we've been trying to get from it and then change the scale to zero, as well as go back to the beginning and change that scale to zero. And then we have the animation. So now it's time to add your channel name. At 13 frames, we added in a custom title and changed it to say Nicole Studios, but obviously you would use whatever your channel name is. And I'm gonna choose the font called Basic Commercial because I thought that it worked well and it kind of gave that professional look. 
At this point, scroll down to face and click on the color tab and add in your color. So I chose red and we're gonna pull that off the red layer because you can't see it. So now at 13 frames, we're gonna add a keyframe for the position. Then go to about 21 frames and pull it up to under the image layers. And then we'll see that we get this animation where it kind of pops up once the white shows. And to make this composition a little bit simpler, we're gonna add the all the elements, all the image elements together in one new compound clip because that's a lot of layers to do with, so it makes it a lot easier when you add it into a compound clip. Then go to titles and find the Ferris wheel title effect. And you'll also see it's kind of just cool animation of text coming up. So then add that under the image layer and I added that about one second and six frames. Then go to two seconds and 15 frames and add it underneath the your channel text. So then change that text to, to be your YouTube URL. It doesn't have to be your YouTube URL, but that's what it could be. And currently I don't have this as my YouTube URL. So if you try using it, it won't work, but this is just an example for this tutorial. So youtube.com slash your channel name or whatever your YouTube URL is. Once you have that, just reposition it because mine kind of got out of the position where I wanted it and add that same font that you use, basic commercial or whatever you decided to use. And when you get it, it's gonna have that gray font. So we're gonna keep the youtube.com part in that gray, but the C slash part is going to be the red that you used in the other text or whatever color you used in the other text. So the problem is now that the animation doesn't stop when it hits that central point. So to fix this, go to the central point of your thing where it kind of stops in the center and it's perfect. So that was for me around two seconds and 15 frames and create a new compound clip with itself. This will allow you to edit the text however you want. So now you're gonna click and add a hold effect on it. So this will, once we play it back, it will stop it in that point that you want it. And then for the last part, we're going to add a fade effect. So we're just gonna pull that underneath the your YouTube URL and we're gonna change the title text to kind of give it your motto or kind of tell people what you do. So for me, it's editing VFX and filmmaking, but whatever you want it to say, it can say, but I would say your channel motto would be the best thing to put there. And then change the color to red or whatever color you want and change the font to whatever font you've been using. For me, basic commercial. And then you get the cool fade effect and we're just gonna adjust the size. And I find that the size kind of matching the YouTube URL works best, but it's all up to you. And as you can see, we want to also add a hold onto that layer because if you cut it too early, it will also fade it out at the end, which isn't what we want. So just add a new compound clip to that and add a hold at about three seconds and nine frames. So then we're just going to cut down the end of that because it's kind of excess time that isn't going to be used. And so that was the whole effect. And I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. It's a lot. So if you don't understand anything fully or I didn't explain anything well enough, then comment down below and I can clarify things or I can create a new video if need be. But that is the effect and I hope you enjoy. And if you did, I would really appreciate it if you had that subscribe button down below or comment what you want me to do in a future video or hit that like button. It all really helps. But thank you so much for watching and have a great day.